Greetings users and programs, this is Atari Living Sacrifice and today we are going to talk about how getting around people that are already in life where we want to be will impact the results that we get in our own lives. There was a time when I thought that I was a street fighter to God. I thought that I was just about unbeatable. I was pretty young when the game came out, and we would play mostly on the Super Nintendo. I would play against my brother and our little circle of friends, and rarely, if ever, would I lose with just about any character. It didn't matter if I picked Dalsim, didn't matter if I picked Blanka, E. Honda, Ryu, Chun-Li, I would kick their butts. I remember going to the arcade one day when I must have been about... 10 or so years old. There was a guy in his 20s, probably his early to mid 20s, playing Street Fighter, and I asked him if I could join him. This older guy must have spent at least $5 trying to beat me. Eventually, my parents came in to get me. They were done with their shopping. They came in to get me, and I was still on that same quarter. I had to walk away from that quarter. Oh my god, it was such an exciting experience, and that experience against my little circle of friends and that one older guy gave me the impression that I could beat anyone. Street Fighter 2 remained one of my favorite games of all time, and I would actually keep up to date on a lot of the different versions as they came out. Eventually, years later, I opened up a gaming center, or you might have heard them called a LAN center or a PC bong. And periodically, people, they would want to play against me, you know, to play against the guy who owns the store. And they would challenge me, they challenge me to any game. And I, they would ask me, what's my best game? What's the game that I'm best at? And I would tell them, Street Fighter 2. Now, 80, 90% of the time, I would kick their butts. But as word started to spread that Street Fighter 2 was my game, more and more people would challenge me because beating the guy that owned the place was fun. Or playing against the guy that owned the place was, was fun. Let me tell you, some of these guys were insanely good. For the first time in my life, I had to change the way I played to keep up with these guys. My usual tactics would not work. By playing these guys that were better than me, eventually I became better at the game because of it. That was a big eureka moment for me and I've used this knowledge, I've used this experience in other areas of my life to this day. Get around other people that are in life where you want to be or getting the results that you want to get. Get around other people that are better, smarter, more productive than you as often as possible so that their habits and their way of thinking can rub off on you. I would recommend you find someone that has the results or similar results in life that you are looking for and do what they do. Find someone that's in life where you want to be and see if they would be willing to help you get there, to get where they're at. We call this beginning with the end in mind. If you want to get rich, get around people that are richer than you. If you want to start your own video game convention, Volunteer at other successful conventions. Fight for the leader's time. Offer to pay for their time. Offer to work for free for these people in exchange for their mentorship. Just by spending time around these types of people, a lot of their habits and their way of thinking will rub off on you. You may have heard just as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Back in the day, before esports was a thing, the most famous gamer was a guy named Jonathan Fatality Wendell. This guy might be the reason that esports are even a thing nowadays. Fatality was known as the best of the best, number one gamer in the world in the time of his reign from like 1999 to about 2006. I would call him the Michael Jordan of gaming, or maybe the LeBron James of gaming. 
he won about $450,000 during that time, or about $60,000 a year in tournament prizes. This was unheard of at the time. His practice sessions were the stuff of legends. He would get a practice house, and he would bring in five other pro gamers to basically live together and play against each other up until the time of these tournaments. You had to be the best of the best to get invited. And you couldn't just be the really good at the game. You usually even had to specialize in a certain area of gameplay, such as strategy or unorthodox plays. And Fatality would have them coach him in areas that he thought he could improve on. Fatality didn't invite his little brother over to the house or the guy next door that just liked to play games. He didn't invite people that didn't challenge him. He didn't invite people over that he could just plow through, racking up kills, laughing at their ineptness. He invited people that were better than him in any areas he felt like he had a weakness in or felt that he could improve on. If they were better than him in that area, that's who he would invite over. Top performers tend to hang out with other top performers. It will not be easy to get into these circles. If you think that these top performers should just accept you for who you are and take you into their fold without you having to go through what they went through to become a top performer, well, I'll, I'll just be the one to break it to you now that maybe becoming a top performer just isn't in the cards for you. Let's use an example from World of Warcraft. You have to grind for gear. They had to do it, and you will too. If these top performers just gave you the top tier gear that they had to earn, then you wouldn't have the experience to understand how to use it. If they played their character, if they played a character for you from level 1 to level 100 and just handed it to you, you wouldn't know how to use that character effectively. You will need to go through the same dungeons over and over and over again to learn where the baddies are and what the bosses are going to throw at you. These top performers could spend all day trying to explain it to you, but until you've actually played a dungeon a couple of times, you won't have any real-world experience for your brain to connect the synapses on. They would try to bring you along on their top performer raids, and then you would just be the first one to wipe, and it would cost the entire team. It will be very expensive to get into these circles. You will have to spend time energy, money to get around these people until you become one of them. It's not that the top performers aren't willing to help you or that they don't have the spirit of generosity most of the time. It's, it's that just like you, they only have 24 hours in a day to give. The way they became a top performer in the first place is they had to use discernment and where they spent their limited amount of time. See if you are willing to give up some things in order to devote yourself to the craft will really impress these types of people. There have been times where I wanted to learn something and I sought out an expert in that craft and offered to come to their city and take them out to lunch and offered to pay them 50 or $100 for their time if they agreed to meet with me. I would have a list of questions prepared and sometimes we would hit it off and create an ongoing relationship. Sometimes, that one dinner or that one lunch, that one breakfast, was the only time I ever met that person. If you would like to learn more about the power of association, I would highly recommend the book The Power of the Other by Dr. Henry Cloud. All right, to kind of close things off and level things out, I'm gonna give you guys like a, a cheat code, if you will, or a TLDR. All right, too long, didn't read. Play with people that are better than you. Get around the highest level person that you're able to as often as possible. Now, also get around people that are only a couple le levels ahead of you as well. If you only get around people that are at levels that you have a hard time seeing yourself reaching, some people might just ask themselves, why even try? I'll never be able to do what he or she does. Think about it like this. If you're playing a game for the first time, 
against one of your buddies. And that guy or that gal is really good at the game. Like, this is their game. And they just plow through you left and right. Don't even give you a chance to learn or practice or anything like that. How long do you think you would just sit there and take it? Or if, you, if the shoe was on the other foot and it was the other way around, would it really surprise you that if you didn't at least go easy on him the first couple rounds, would it really surprise you if he tells you, eh, yeah, this isn't really my game, or he gives up after like 15 minutes? It wouldn't surprise us at all, would it? If this video helps one fellow gamer adapt their way of thinking and grow into the type of person that they've always dreamed of becoming, then my time has been well spent. If this video has helped you in any way, leave a comment down below and tell us how. Until next time, keep moving forward, y'all. We'll see you on the next one.